Synergy. Welcome to Synergy. Live with Synergy. Live with Synergy. This is your host, Andrea John Baptiste. Welcome to Synergy, where music, business, and culture synchronize. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Synergy. This is Andrea John Baptiste right here with you on your favorite Drive Time Show on 99.1 FM WDJY here in Atlanta. Synchronizers, whoo, we got some power in the place for you today. Now, let me say this. Y'all know I say that we have a great show lined up for you every time, but I have told you no lies and I don't intend to start lying to you today. We have in this place some mavens of music media. And so today I am excited about sitting at the feet of these brilliant women right here <laughs> for Women's History Month. And so we've got from Jamaica, Empress Yvette Marshall. Now, some of you have heard of her. Some of you know her because she comes from the sound system background. She comes from a long, long time of powerful radio programming out of South Florida. And now she is doing producing, engineering, voiceovers, all of the good stuff um, and still lending a strength to music media. Empress Yvette, welcome, welcome, and greetings, greetings, and welcome to Synergy. Give thanks, give thanks, Andrea. Blessings, blessings. And next, from New York, my other hometown, right, where I grew up, <laughs> I mean, an amazing writer, contributor to Billboard magazine, and there's just enough respect for this young lady here. Why? Because she has allowed or, or supported individuals, artists who the world may never have known through her writing, particularly musicians and artists out of Jamaica, into Billboard magazine, right? And into a lot of the other major uh, publications, The Daily Beast, she's written for NPR. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Pat Moschino, welcome to Synergy. Well, thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you for such a beautiful introduction. Now, this sister, I just absolutely enjoy so much. Let me tell you, there are lots of different things because she is also a radio DJ, okay, as well as a photojournalist. <laughs> and while I don't consider myself a radio DJ because I don't really play music, um, Jeff makes us sound good, as, as you guys know, every week, right? <laughs> but she takes some of the most amazing pictures of nature as well as of the various shows around the globe. And she's also a, me a partner in Majesty Media, which is a promotional company. So she's also giving a platform as well as good sound strategic advice to artists. So you can hear her, you can see her, you can learn from her. And so I gotta tell you, enough respect and appreciation for mm -hmm. Y'all know her as Beverly Shaw. Some of you do. Most of you know her as <laughs> Sister Irie. Yeah. Sister Irie, greetings, 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 and welcome to Synergy. Greetings, enough, enough love to all of you. I won't extend the amount of appreciation I have, but I'm so honored to be here. Out of Toronto, okay, this young lady is just up to doing some amazing things. She has embraced her culture kept it going in the cold, cold, cold climate of Canada. That's all I can ever think of when I'm in Canada, even in the summer is cold, but that's an aside. Um, she has done some amazing things, like I said, in terms of filmmaking, um, production, writing. She's a contributor to the New York Times. She has a magazine mm -hmm. called Bashi. She's created a film, like I said, that is just really undertaking some of the changes in Toronto's um, Jamaican or Caribbean areas. And so we have got to say, and I think she might be the youngest of the crowd, not that it matters, but you know what? Senior sisters, right? Because <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I want to go the elders route yet. <laughs> but it's always important that we share and appreciate with the younger ones. And also, I'm looking forward to learning from her mm -hmm. as well, because you know, these young people are savvy, full of technology, technology. Mm -hmm. 
and things of that nature. So <laughs> without further ado, welcome Shireen Taylor. Greetings, Sister Shireen, and welcome to Synergy. Thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate the introduction and for being invited into the fold for today's conversation. Sister Irie, what does music media mean to you? And what do you think the role of, um, what is the role of music media professionals? Well, I, <clears throat> I see it as the professional work that's done to create awareness of an artist and an artist's works and to be done in a creative and imaginative way so that it is attractive to the fan base uh, that can be, a, you know, that can become a part of that artist's foundation. There's a lot of hard work that each of these women I know put into it. I think that's something we'll talk about later in terms of what it takes to actually do our work. And, um, but mainly we're serving the artist at a level that they generally don't have. They're the artist, they're creative, they're in that mindset. We're more into that connection between the art and the business. Mm -hmm. And I think it, sometimes it's underrated as to the importance that it has, even by the artist. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Sure. I yeah. agree, yes. So sure. Pat, put in on this because Please. we know Please. that everybody wants to be in Billboard <laughs> magazine, right? But maybe not so much on community radio, maybe not so much on, you know, whatever platform that they don't see with millions and billions of views and so on. But talk to us a little bit about that aspect of the, the ratings and the importance of all of these platforms. Yes, well, um, Sister Irie really hit a nerve when she said how it's just doesn't really seem to be fully appreciated by the artists what goes into our side of the business, what we do in helping them to promote what it is that they do. An intense amount of labor goes into these presentations. You know, you might read a story and five minutes, but clearly it didn't take me five minutes to write it. And as any of the writers here can, can back that up, I am sure. But um, to just appreciate the effort and to, to your question about um, getting um, an, art, an artist getting in Billboard or whatever it is, you know, so to just be cognizant of whatever magazine you're trying to get into, look at what else is in there and say mm -hmm. is what i if i'm an artist just starting out and this article is all about people who are in the top 40 do i really fit this platform at this mm -hmm. time you know mm -hmm. it's worth a try good. Course, yeah do i really fit you know mm -hmm. try to do a little research before you approach the writer before you approach the before your manager approaches the writer or the publication to see if it's a fit and you know maybe at this time it isn't the right fit maybe mm -hmm. a year from now maybe six mm -hmm. months you know that's what's so exciting about music like an artist you're not even considering right now can be at the top of the charts six months from now and we just don't know who that might be you know so um just have that consideration for where you're pitching that you know maybe you're not the right fit and don't take it personally because i mean writers get rejected you know i might write want to write about this artist and they say no we're, we don't we, we're not interested in that but i don't take it personally artists shouldn't take it personally either it's part mm -hmm. of the business part of it that's no reflection on you or your music it's just at this time at this point in time the person making that decision which is almost never the writer didn't see it as the correct fit. So just do your research. For the past 12 years, Axum Management Capabilities Inc. has helped individuals, businesses, and municipalities move from capability to actuality. Our team of experienced business developers will help you to start and grow your business. Let us help you create your business or strategic plan. We'll create with you a responsive marketing campaign that gets you results. How about a new look or brand makeover? Need a grant written for your nonprofit? How about a corporate event planned? Well, visit Axum HQ or call 954-742-9166 to get moving from capability to actuality. Axum Management Capabilities your full-scale development firm serving the U.S., Caribbean, and Africa. Catch us on Instagram, Twitter, 
and Facebook at Axum HQ. You're listening to Synergy Radio on WDJY 99.1 FM, where music, business, and culture synchronize. And perceive that you have been doing radio for a long time. And so what does your, a show putting together one of your radio pieces that are, it's highly listened to here, particularly in South Florida, in this market, what does it take to get all of that done? Meditation. (laughs) That's for me. Because I'm always thinking music in my head. Music is running through my head 24-7. So when I know, let's say today I have to go on air, I already kind of have an idea of where I'm going. But believe me, when I open that studio door to go into the studio and go hit that on air button, things might change because there might be different levels of inspiration. How that inspiration occurs is of course through even what Patricia was just saying about you could be the top artist today and then boom, within the next hour, I just get a call that someone else is ripping up Kingston, Jamaica. I just got the new tune and I got to play it. You know, things can change within that moment. So, but meditation, because I know for sure, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this and I'm going to go that route. But then I go into the studio and then there's news sometimes that's not so good where an artist has transitioned and I have to change around the format of that particular program right then and there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. radio is very unpredictable mm-hmm. because you go with a mindset and within that hour, everything could change because you could yeah. have a disaster outside and you have mm-hmm. to report that and you have to relate music to that situation. So for me going into radio, I tell people this, I do not really prepare a program. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. I know what artists I'm going to play. And when I cover the music charts, obviously we know what music is going to be displayed in that broadcast. But other than that, I move with that free spirit within me, which may sound strange, which may Mm -hmm. sound weird to many people, but Mm -hmm. it is what has kept me for 20 years. I can't believe it. This month marks 20 years in the music business. Yeah. Congratulations. And I never thought I'd make it to 20 years. Wow. I don't know how you did it for 20 years when, girl, you're looking like you're about 22. So uh, <laughs> she'd be on the radio with a, 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 a bottle in her, <laughs> in her diapers. <laughs> Sister Shireen, you know, you're also a writer and you um, are, have gone into filmmaking and that's a whole nother beast for lack of a better term. I mean, cause you're getting into audio, visual, personality, scripts. I mean, I, I'm not a filmmaker. So tell us a little bit about that part of music media. Yeah, so I think in general, at least for me, what drives a lot of my work is what it means to chronicle and archive Black music tradition and Black communities um, across the diaspora. So the lens from which I write is one that is informed by my mission to document and one that is informed by my mission to archive, especially since that is not something that's afforded to all Black communities, Black music traditions. And when we talk about when these cultural or music productions leave the places that they have been birthed and are taken up into different diasporas. So when reggae leaves Jamaica and exists in Toronto or exists in London or exists in New York, what happens to those uh, music communities? What happens to those music scenes? How do these music genres and traditions take on new lives with the new geographies that they exist in? So that's sort of what music media means to me, is is documenting it from that. And where I see the linkages between um, music writing or, you know, editorializing and filmmaking is, is just that. Like, how are we preserving this moment? How are we documenting this time? What are we making uh, use of with this snapshot? Um, And how are we carrying the communities uh, that we care about with care? um, And how are we ensuring that memory making, cultural preservation is sort of the undertone in those 
um, in those things. Let me ask you this, because we're here because we're females, we're women, and as they would say in Jamaica, we have the feminine gender. So does that gender impact your work? Are there any differences for men and for women in this particular space? And I'm going to start with um, Empress Yvette. Of course, the, let's, let's just be real. The struggle is real, okay? As a woman in the industry, we all know from the 1960s when the whole reggae music scene started, we've been pushed to the back. Backup singers, behind the scenes, helping the engineers in Studio One. Let it be known there were many women in Studio One helping the engineers to build some of the greatest rhythms ever in the world but we do not get the recognition we deserve. And that's the issue there. And one of the great things about this time and age is that we cannot go unrecognized, but we also cannot let those who came before us go unrecognized. So I'm doing my research right now with Treasure Isle and Studio One to retrieve the women who actually were there every day when these hits were being made. One of the things I find in my tribe is that I get undermined. I've hosted shows, I've done it all from that point of view, but when you're a woman, they tend to look at you a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And even your compensation is different from your male counterparts. I've known too many artists who fell by the wayside and said, no, it's too hard. I got stuck in England and they don't treat you right and I never give up. That is my message to every woman here on this panel, every woman who's gonna view this, because Lord knows we've all been through struggles. Mm -hmm. And there's been a moment in time where you say, is this music thing really worth it? Is it really worth it? And guess what I say? At the end of the day, yeah, because that's all I know. All my hands can do is touch the turntables and the engineer boards. That's all I know. So I'm never going to give up. And I have to say, give thanks to my mom, who may have not been a musician, but she knew many artists, uh, the Whalers in the 60s. I mean, she knew Toots and the Maytals and all of those people. And she explained to me even how some of the women in the studios were being treated. You know, and I said to myself, well, that's not going to be me because I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do what I want to do because I believe in this. And if you believe in what you do, there's no stopping you. Mm. Whether you're a woman, it doesn't matter. There's no stopping you. Ain't and that's no my strong internal belief. Mm -hmm. Core values. Ain't no stopping us now. So Sister Irie, I saw you shaking your head. And so, you know, you also, and, and I'm going to, we were transparent here. So Synchronizer Sister Irie is my sister, your sister. She's also a white sister. And mm. she has been in a Caribbean space for a very, very long time. So race and, and gender, I want to ask as well for you. Okay, so first of all, let me say I agree with everything Yvette said. I do have an additional perspective, and uh, that really comes from the fact that there are many women that get into the reggae music industry who are not really focused on a career and professionalism, and that has caused me more trouble than when I'm out there doing my job and I've done it to the ultimate level of quality that I can. And I was actually going to save this for a little later, but it does segue here, is um, with respect comes responsibility. And I believe that women as a strength, like I, I can feel the strength from Yvette, and I feel it from, from these other women on the panel, um, we're serious about what we do. And we don't go in there and fool around and, and, oh boy, we get to hang out with the artists and blah, blah, blah. That has caused me more trouble than people that might not take me seriously until I've gotten the respect and over time proven I don't give any mixed messages about what I'm there to do. Because sometimes you go and they're like, okay, you're here as a photographer or a journalist, but could you go to the store and pick up some cold medicine for me or something along those lines? And I'm like, no, I'm a photojournalist. I'm here to do my work just like you are. So the disrespect for me has never really come from where I work. 
because I freelance and I have more control over who can tell me what. But where I run into roadblocks are when people are confused about how serious the commitment is to what I do. And I'll, I see some more nodding heads, so let me turn it over to them. <laughs> wow, we've got a bobblehead studio going on right now. Because, and thumbs ups and all kinds of things, synchronizers, because we are here with media or, or mavens of music media, Beverly Shaw, Sister Irie, Pat Moschino, Empress Yvette and Shireen Taylor as we are talking about music and media. And so as, as Sister Irie just, I think, opened some floodgates in terms of <laughs> where <laughs> gender in this space. And so, Pat, do you want to weigh in on gender? And you, because you're also, I mean, you know, as a writer and particularly for these national and global publications, I can only imagine. <laughs> um, you know, um, it's an interesting dynamic, um, as you mentioned, um, race and gender. You know, I can only say in my history that um, it's like some people might have looked at me like, what is this? You know, as I said, I started in um, like 1989, 1990s, and that was a very... Um, very powerful time for reggae in New York City, where I live. Brooklyn was, you know, just on fire and a real hotbed for the music. So important, especially for the dance hall strain of the music, which is really what I cut my teeth on, so to speak, because that's what was happening in such a big way at the time I started. And, um, you know, I often laugh with friends that I have from that time, like, I don't I don't know how a 20 year old me like would get on the subway at midnight and jump in a dollar van and ride down Church Avenue and <laughs> had to be at um, the Biltmore Ballroom or wherever the happening clash was going on or wherever the, you know, the, wherever Shabo was performing that night or whoever was in town, you know, but I, somehow I did it, you know, me today <laughs> would really have some pause or if, if I had a daughter trying to do those same things, I'm sure I'd be horrified. But back then, you know, it was just, <laughs> just that passion to do it more so than any logic applied to, you know, is it really safe? And I know that there were, you know, some and a very small majority, but some people may thought, well, what is this? white woman doing here at these things you know and in jamaica i started to go to jamaica regularly around that time there were some people said oh, she must be cia you know like, uh, how could she what is she doing at this addies versus jaro clash or you know these various things that i just loved and felt compelled to be at you know but the thing is i guess i never i never really felt out of place because i felt I just wanted so much to be there and most people never thought twice it's, it's some people just str strangers in the crowd say you enjoying yourself it's like yeah and they're like have a great night you know or just things yeah. like people were for the most part really welcoming occasionally you get some things like I don't get this I don't, you you know all the things to do when you're here you know but <laughs> I don't know but um it was such a great I think uh a, wonderful foundation to have in this music like that time i mean every you know every time in the music has its own special characteristics there's people who came up in the 70s obviously a very historic and special time but i was too young for that time but that late 80s 90s brooklyn i am you know it's such a special place in my heart and i'm so happy that i lived in New York at that time and it'd be something that you know if I hadn't lived through it, you know, I'd be reading about it. Did these things really happen? But, you know, they did really happen because, you know, I was there. So um, just to say that, you know, I, I think there is, you know, as a woman, there's an, I think, an additional um, level of scrutiny you might face, an additional um, level of if you ascribe to what people are putting on you, there's a, maybe an additional level of having to prove oneself. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you're a writer, but I'm going to go with this guy because he's a guy, you know, and, and these things happen all the time. Or, uh, you know, I, I think what you're saying is really true, but I'm going to check with a man to 
really find out if it's the truth, you know, and things like that have been said to me in various forms. And I mean, they've changed a lot over the years. It's 30 years is quite a span and they have changed. And as women ascend to all kinds of roles, um, breaking barriers all the time, you know, this is great. And for generations coming up, there will be less of a struggle, but the wider society, we see there is a disparity between genders in pay, as you mentioned, Yvette, and in just how we're perceived, as you mentioned, Sistari. So, you know, it's going to be a while before these things work themselves out in the reggae business, certainly, but as time goes on, we get better and better, and um, hopefully in our lifetimes, we will see some really radical shifts in terms of parity for women and for all that we do and to be taken mm -hmm. as seriously as our male counterparts. Mm. Good word from Pat Moschino. Shereen, mm -hmm. you are in the Canadian yes. and in so many ways I look at Canada as utopia. I mean I'm not, I know, but just particularly as we've gone through you know so many political changes in Canada have seemed to kept a level head um, as we're dealing with COVID and I don't believe, I'll say this publicly, that we as a nation have dealt with it well at all, but Canada seems to have kept a level head, um, you know, and, and uh, provided, uh, what's the word, uh, safety and consistency and support for its residents and so on. So is this similar in your, in your space, in your country, in your experiences, in terms of the gender, what, what can we say about the Canadian markets? Is there any difference? I sure hope so, because y'all seem to have it a lot more together in a lot of ways than we do. So tell me I'm right, please. Well, I'll just say this. Canada has really great PR. Historically, we've had really great PR. So all of the ugly isms that are rearing their head everywhere else are also rearing their heads on this land as well, unfortunately. Um, you know, I don't know if we've had the very best vaccine vaccine rollout as far as that's concerned, but that's another conversation for another time. Um, as far as like the, you know, the sort of uh, things that we have to navigate, um, I'll, I'll say this, like, there's a lot of like negotiating and sometimes that negotiation removes itself from the conscious to the subconscious. And what I mean by that is like when I'm preparing to go to interviews and the interview may be with somebody who's a man, I'm always thinking like, is it appropriate for me to wear this? Should I be wearing this? Blah, 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 blah. All of those things that are really like bound up in respectability and really bound up in um, nothing that have to do with your skills as a journalist, like, you know, you can wear your long skirt and do a great interview, and you can do your short skirt and wear an interview, and those things are neither here nor there. But, you know, in thinking about your safety um, as a woman or somebody who's woman presenting, like, those things sort of become things that you have to sort of navigate, um, and and that is, like, one of the things that when I'm being a little bit more reflective of, like, uh, some of the gender-based, uh, you know, difficulties of occupying this role is one of the things that I've sort of observed that there's a lot of this negotiating that I'm doing sort of uh, internally about um, my appearance and how that might, uh, if that will have any bearing on the outcome of the interview or the outcome of what will be the final product. So there's, there's that one element. And the other thing that really, really this is very annoying is this sort of blurred line between uh, like what I'm there for and what people think that I'm there for, um, which was, is an echo of like what was already said. But like, I'm very much like a colleague, like I'm, I am, I'm not one of the boys. I'm not, you know, trying to um, like uh, do anything outside of my job. <laughs> and I don't think that... Mm -hmm. Uh, how people uh, think I'm showing up in this space um, needs to be read as anything beyond that. But, you know, when I talk to the generation of writers before me, um, you know, who are from Toronto, who are still in the music space and doing different things or have since left um, to pursue maybe other media or other careers, like that's sort of the, the mainstay is that, um, you know, when you're showing up as, as a woman in these spaces that you're sort of having to um, undo 
and like cross all of these biases before you even get your first question out. Powerful words, and you know, thank you for that clarity and that illumination. It's it it, it breaks my heart because. I'm always hoping that the next generation has it a little different and a little bit easier because of all the crap that we've had to put up with, <laughs> still, you know, put up with. And then I hear that, nah, it ain't so, you know, you're still putting up with it. So I'm going to just ask each one of you, give me, like really succinctly, tell me what's that one thing you want to say to whomever, if the powers that be, the powers that be in this music space, whether it's the artist, the, the, sh the you know, manager, the um, editor, the producer, whomever, but in terms of there, because, you know, we can sit here and talk about all these things as women in our experiences, but we also need the allies and those that are willing to change and make systemic changes and start off with the individual but yeah start to change these systems because shereen who i believe is probably like 10 i'm just kidding sister girl i know you're in your you're probably like 20s but you know you are you should not be telling and regurgitating the same message the same story 20 40 60 i was with a, a, an elder earlier today 60 years later come on now so i'm gonna ask starting with uh sister Irie, what's that one thing that you you would say for them to change now yeah i could change my mind tomorrow but right now i think that the manager the relationship between media and the manager so that the manager can coach the artist on behavior and how to uh, manage their relationship with a media person. I mean, one of the issues that the industry has is there just aren't many really good managers these days. And you don't have to be, you don't have to be an expert in music business to be a manager. You can learn it, but you have to have very good interpersonal skills. And those interpersonal skills means that you recognize the person for um, who they are and the value that they have and how they can bring that value to your artist. So I would say that the manager is a key person. Mm, good one. I appreciate that. Uh, Pat Moschino, tell us what's that one thing? Yeah, I would, I would direct it to the artist. Like <laughs> show, um, you know, I, in my years, I could say that on, I could count on both hands with fingers left over the the amount of times I've been actually thanked for an interview. Not like that someone would bother to get my phone number or send an email. I mean, there yeah. are ways that are so easy to just reach out and say, hey, thank you for that. Now, you don't do it for the thank you. We all do what we do for a, for the passion of it because it really makes no sense to me it makes no financial sense to be doing what I've been doing for the past 30 years. There are so many other things I could have done that I would have more of, you know, I would have an income that I wouldn't be like, you know, as, as I get older, you start thinking of these things and it's like, you know, it, you know, I, if I was planning for a sound future, I never would have done this, but it is the thing that has driven me all these years. I don't regret it, certainly, but there, there are so few rewards beyond the work itself that it just means something to get that acknowledgement from an artist that says hey you know thank you for taking you know however many days out of your life to write about me and my music and um put it out to an audience another thing too is like please you know i've arranged interviews with artists for stories for billboard and other publications We've gone as far as dates, times, locations, where this will take place. Oh boy. Yeah. And they're not there and they can't exactly. be found. And you can somehow that phone number that was working <clears throat> two weeks before setting the whole thing up, somehow it's not working anymore. Like, please just don't waste somebody's time like that. It's very, very inconsiderate. And, it, you know, that space in Billboard or wherever like, it could go to somebody who would be appreciative of it, who would show up, who would say, and if you need something else, I'm here, you know, but this idea that, you know, I mean, I had one person, a prominent name that, of course, I would not mention, but like, was getting his hair done at the time of our interview, and it just <laughs> killed me, and I, you know, that should have been enough for me to say, 
no, I, all right, just leave this person alone. But because I so believed in the story, two more times I tried and the hoops mm -hmm. I went through and I was like, you know, it's ridiculous. I mean, but right to my fellow writers, my fellow broadcasters, like too, sometimes you just have a standard when, have to have your standard. And if somebody yeah. does something so disrespectful of your time, mm -hmm. maybe you just got to cut it off at the first. <laughs> first violation just say you know if you, yep. you don't care if you care so little about my time maybe mm -hmm. I'm looking at the wrong person to be focused on for this piece so. good word thankful gratitude is a must and so yeah. we have a word for the artist or for the managers we have a word for the artist Sis, uh, Empress Yvette what's your word your one thing <clears throat> one thing I will say is this for the entire industry, respect our credentials. Yeah. Respect our credentials. Mm -hmm. It goes right to that foundation. Mm -hmm. I present my credentials to you. I'm a journalist, radio broadcaster. I'm an MC for the show. Why is it that I'm left behind? I can't get backstage to host the show. Respect my credentials because you're letting other people who are not a part of the whole format to come in and you booked me. The name is on the flyer. Respect all of our credentials. As women, I don't believe, especially collectively, listening to all of these wonderful women here, our credentials are not being respected. Mm -hmm. We put the time in, we put the mm -hmm. education in, we put the work in. All I ask is you respect our credentials, that's all. And that is a good message for the industry. Oh, sisters, I mean, woo! Y'all have given me lioness bumps because I can't think, uh, I mean, I know about the management piece. I definitely know about the artist piece and the respect for the time. And I got it. The respect for the credentials piece. Oh, Ja, let me tell you. Synchronizers, we are getting hot. It's getting hot in this studio today on Synergy, right here at 99.1 FM, because we are speaking with mavens of music media. So artists, managers, industry professionals that are listening in, take heed to what we're saying. You know, take heed. It's not something to be poo-pooed. Sister Shireen, what's your one thing, girl? Yeah, I would say, uh, I guess a reminder to artists, managers, uh, my Journalism is not PR, but P, but journalism can be a part of PR strategy. Um, so oftentimes, uh, I think what the responsibilities of journalists are, um, according to artists and managers, are a little bit skewed. Um, and very much iterating what everyone has mentioned already earlier today, that when you're going in to chronicle a moment, discuss a artist, talk about a time, put things within context of you know wider society or wider movements or anything that's happening that that is the the purpose um and and nothing else so uh journalism is is not pr but i get how you know it can be part of the strategy but it's not mm -hmm. it's not pr mm -hmm. so that's what i would just remind folks Wow. So we've just done some education for the industry prof professionals in terms of, yeah, that's, that's part of the, your strategy, but it's not what it is. Um, you know, and I, I just want to throw in, because my thing is always this, yes, I will always need content. We will always need guests for the show, music, business, culture, and, and, and they must sit on that kind of three-legged stool. Um, and artists, you will always need exposure, but I will draw the line. Now my wait time, once I get on the Zoom, 10 minutes, y'all, 10 minutes. You don't show up in 10 minutes, I'm gonna give you the tag and I wait five more. That's it, 15 minutes and then you're done. I will give you a second oh, yeah. chance because life happens, <clears throat> get it. But after that second time, don't hit me up again. Don't email me, don't, don't. and I mean that. I mean that with mm -hmm. all, everything in my fiber because you did not respect my time. Okay, you did not respect my credentials. And so at this particular time, then I don't necessarily want to give you exposure because as I think everyone else has said, we have, there are other people who may not be as large of a name as yours today, but they could easily surpass you tomorrow. And we're glad when they are professional, they're on time, they are prepared, Yes. They are respectful. Right. 
They understand the audience to whom they are speaking. And so this is, I mean, y'all hit the nail right on the head and now I'm on my soapbox, but I'm going to get off because this is your interview and not mine. <laughs> <laughs> As we move on, you know, so I think we've gotten some of the stuff out of our craw, as my mother would say, you know, you keep these things in and you get it out of your craw. I think it's the chicken that has the little nuggets in their craw. That's what the, it's called, right? The, the, the intestines. So we've gotten some of that stuff out of our craw. We've shared, you know, managers do better, artists do better, industry professionals do better. Um, what are some of the new and exciting, maybe not new, but some of the exciting things that are happening on the Caribbean music scene right now? I mean, we're hailing from Texas, we're hailing from New York, we're hailing from Jamaica, we're hailing from Toronto. So that's a, a, a wide swath of geography represented here today on Synergy. And so what's new? What's exciting, ladies? Um, I'm going to start with you, Sister Irie. Well, I would say that because of the pandemic, uh, which has been both a problem, but it, there's some good things that have come out of it as well. And people have had to be more innovative and determined um, to get their message and their music out. So there's been a greater reliance on live streaming performances. And because of that, I don't know how many of you saw the Bears show the other night, the technical production was way, way up there. Um, also, if you saw Savannah the other night at Blues and Jazz, she just about knocked me out. But I was really impressed with the level of uh, technical production that people are applying to streaming that maybe they didn't do before. The, uh, the biggest thing that I notice in my work as a broadcaster is the blending of Jamaican and other Caribbean music with other genres such as hip hop, uh, Afro beats, Latin music, Latin is blowing off the charts. If anybody wants to go look at numbers and where the money is, uh, reggaeton and all of that Latin music is, is embellishing and using uh, reggae as a format. Even EDM has some influences from uh, Jamaican music. And then soca and compa, which comes from Haiti, are other French Caribbean countries that have also blended with these other genres, um, such as reggaeton or Afrobeats. I would use Major Laser as one example of somebody who successfully, very successfully has done that. So that's pretty much the, I'm sure there's more and I wanna leave it for some others to pitch in, but those are my biggies. Awesome, yes, big, big, big teams go on in, in the Caribbean music space. Pat, what's your take? What's, what's exciting to you um, in the Caribbean music space? Yeah, um, like Sister Irie said, you know, like with COVID, you know, we're all, we have to, since we can't <laughs> gather at festivals and concerts, which I so sorely miss, but, um, you know, we're, we have been treated with some great uh, virtual productions, the Barris and the Jazz and Blues being two recent examples of that, and they have the online uh, listening parties and the online, uh, you know, whatever it is. And, um, you know, those things are, are going well. I, I, nothing could ever substitute for me being right. at a festival, hopefully in Jamaica <laughs> or anywhere in the Caribbean. That would always be my gold standard of being at a festival. But, um, you know, the virtual space, it's, it's forced, as Sister Ari said, forced people to become more creative, which is always a good thing and it's sort of like when you're constrained and you just don't have the usual things you can rely on you have to think outside of the box so to speak and I think people have been doing a great job um, of that uh, and with with the music itself I just want to um, I mean the question may not be about individual artists but I just think what um, what's going on with protege and his mm -hmm. artists um, mm -hmm. Savannah and Lila Ik and Jazz Elise. I think it's so creative and mm -hmm. so so powerful. And I mean, yeah. it's historic as the first uh, Jamaica-based artist to have a, his label signed to a U.S. major. I think that's yeah. so significant. And yes. um, I don't know if it's. I, I know I've done pieces. Other writers, of course, many writers have done pieces. But I'm I'm a little disappointed that the it's not getting the kind of attention that I would like it to for how important it is to the music and its evolution. And um, 
the signing and what that represents, but also the, the kind of music they're making. It's just so creative and it's so, I mean, it's rooted in very traditional Jamaican sounds, yet he just takes it in all kinds of directions with all kinds of influences and for, and talk about, you know, on Women's Day, here he is, you know, besides his great work, he's giving voice and platform yeah. to three phenomenal female talent. And, you know, so, you know, you know, great respect to him for that. And all these women for the, the three women for the great work they're doing and this incredible sound that they're creating, you know, it's really forging something different and it's so well done. You know, that's mm -hmm. the other thing. I listen mm -hmm. to the production on these albums and it's yeah. just phenomenal. And you kind of have to go back again and again because it's so multi-layered and you just pick up so many different references and little, it's a snippet of this from Prince Buster. It's a oh, yeah. slice of that from mm -hmm. Sly and Robbie. It's mm -hmm. something else from Jinjo Laws. I mean, it's just amazing the way it's all put together. So, you know, I just think that's such a great advancement for him. Getting that signing, these great female talents that he's bringing along with him for this extraordinary ride. And I think it may not, you know, the fact that they haven't been able to tour just yet because of COVID, you know, may have impeded this kind of global explosion of what it is they're bringing to the world. But that will come. The world, as Taurus Riley says, the world will open up and uh, sooner or later, you know, we will all be out there and we'll be able to see these great talents on the stage. Um, stages around the world doing what they do because as we saw with jazz and blues like the the level of performances they mm -hmm. all give is really yeah wonderful so you know that that would to me is a really significant thing that has happened for the music so synchronizers did you hear the humility in all of that did you hear the accolades given to others but also <laughs> did you hear the music knowledge and history that pat just dropped on us because it's like and i'm watching her and she's taking the layers and I, and i'm there with you because i know and yes protege is doing amazing things and yes salute to him because it is he's giving voice to a, the next generation of women and that is yes. so important yes. so important yes. you know and so we give thanks for that uh empress yvette tell us a little bit from your perspective what's what's new amazing and exciting on the <clears throat> music scene well in jamaica right now everyone is getting you know doing the virtual thing so a lot of new artists, mm -hmm. what I see in the studio, working in the studio in Jamaica, a lot of new artists, and I love it. I actually love it. I videotape them and then play back the video for them because I let them know, I said, you just perform. What they're doing now is performing in studio while recording yeah. as if they're on stage. And I love it because they know the era that they're in, it's virtual. Mm -hmm. So even recording a brand new song, they perform and they astute themselves in a way where the cameras are on them. Cameras are not on them really in the studio, but they have that stand, they have that presence, as if all eyes are on me, the world is watching, Good stuff. It is funny how time flies when we are having fun, <laughs> dropping knowledge, learning from each other in a positive space right here on Synergy today. We are synchronizing like we haven't synchronized in a very, very, very long time, I think. And I am just so thankful to have Sister Irie Beverly Shaw, Pat Moschino, Empress Yvette, Shireen Taylor with us. And as we wrap up, Shireen, Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing in the space. And before we go, though, I'm going to ask everyone after Shireen speaks to just go, get very quickly how folks can stay connected with you, with your brand, with your publications. It's important because you know what we do? You know what we do? We promote other people and we're not so good. I don't know about y'all, but I, I will confess. And yeah. talking to you. <laughs> But we will promote other people and share other people's work. And sometimes we don't do it so much for ourselves. And so I definitely want us to be able to do that. So Shireen, tell us a little bit about what you're seeing in the Caribbean music space and, and also how folks can stay connected with Miss Bomb, Shireen Taylor. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, so I'm like really, really excited about, uh, well, kind of two things that I see happening and that are sort of always happening, but 
you know, I, I'm really loving that artists, like the new generation of artists are thinking about new ways to preserve the musical tradition, the sonic aesthetics of the genres that we are so intimately familiar with and that we love and we champion. But I'm also equally excited about the new wave of artists who are taking those same genres and figuring out new ways to allow them to exist um, and sort of either bringing them up to speed or allowing them to exist in these hybrid sounds. Um, I'm, I'm so happy for those artists who are sort of pushing them to the to those sounds to the fore and sort of remixing it, um, you know, inclusive of the of the indigo artists that were mentioned, Jazz Elise, Lila E.K., Savannah. Um, there's also artists like Tessellated, Zach Stoney, Black Hero, um, Royal Blue, uh, Leno Banton. There's just, there's so many new artists, Joby J, uh, uh, Courtney, this, making such incredibly great um, uh, music and, and figuring out really great ways to, to blend it. And I'm, I'm really excited to see um, the music that they're going to produce. Um, in addition to that though, um, I, I really, it, it was really a really great observatory moment when um, because of COVID, a lot of the artists um, that who have like worked with like Jamaican like directors in the past, they had to work with the artists that were there. So there was this new trust that was um, sort of given to local talent. And I'm hoping that once the, uh, you know, the quarantine and the bands are lifted and folks are able to be a little bit more, more mobile again, that there is a continued trust to stay with the local talent as far as uh, visual architects, uh, music video directors, uh, DOPs. I'm, I'm hoping that there is this maintenance of allowing those folks as well to have the agency to tell the narrative stories that accompany mm -hmm. the musical ones that we are um, listening to and we uh, put in our headphones every day. So I'm really excited to see post quarantine what becomes of the visual landscape of music videos that accompany the music that we love. Mm. And, and folks can find me on all platforms at S H H A R I N E on, on all social media platforms. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shireen Taylor. We appreciate that. All right, Sister Irene, how do they follow you, find you? Uh, I would say the easiest way is through Majesty Media, and that can be on any of the social media platforms. Our website, which is majestymedia.net, um, which is being updated right now, but it's still accessible. Um, or you can contact me through Facebook, which is really easy also. As Sister Irie, Facebook made me put Beverly Shaw on there, and I was really upset about that. <laughs> but you can find me as Beverly Sister Irie Shaw, or Sister Irie, I think, will pull it up, which is who I really am. <laughs> yes, you are, Sister Irie. They made you put your whole government name out there, Sister. Okay. Yeah, next thing, my social security. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, how do ones find and follow you and support all of the things that you're doing? Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm on IG. It would be at Pat Moschino. On Twitter, it's at Patty with two T's, Patty Mesk, M E S. So P A T T Y M E S C. And on Facebook, it's Patricia Moschino. Government name also. <laughs> <laughs> the government name. Tell you Facebook. Thank you. Um, and M. <laughs> How about you, Empress Yvette? You can find me anywhere in the universe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter on, as Empress Yvette and Instagram as Empress Yvette. Facebook, it looks like they love the government names. It's Yvette. <laughs> okay, I give you the radio name, Yvette Marshall. So you get that. And then, of course, you know, you can, you'll see me. You, you, you'll see me. And of course, support my new productions, ladies. I need the sisters behind me. I need them. I have a new artist that I'm featuring, Cruziano, out of St. Croix, and he is fire. All genres he conquers. So I'm just letting you know, I'm in production with him right now. You will be seeing and hearing more from him and from me, production-wise. 
and he has an invitation already to Synergy where music, business, and culture synchronize. Ladies, muse, mavens of music media, I thank you so much. I hope you, you have enjoyed you. this conversation as much as I have today, right here on Synergy. Synchronizers, you know, follow us on YouTube, on Facebook, on well, not on Twitter right now. I don't know why they banned us, but we are live with Synergy and on YouTube, it's Sync with Synergy. Till next week, live in synergy. It's Andrea John Baptiste saying, later, walk good and one love. That's our time. That's our chat. Now it's time to call it a wrap. Tune in next week at five for another episode of Synergy Live, where music, business, and culture synchronize. Until then, hit us up online at livewithsynergy.com. Synergy is a production of Black Iowa TV.